Hi, my name is Emily Corcoran and I'm the writer, producer and supporting actress for a film called The Stolen. Uh, the Stolen was shot in New Zealand and was funded out of the UK, Germany, uh, New Zealand obviously and a little bit out of the States and it was a really, really tricky thing to put together financially. So I've been asked by Film Courage to talk to you about film funding. So the first thing I'd like to say as a creative person who had to go into film funding to fund my own film was it sucks. I can't really express how much I dislike it. I really do. I think if you're a creative, which you may very well be, you might be a director or a writer trying to get your own project off the ground, is probably the last thing you want to think about. And frankly, it is a very, very different skill set. But let me see if I can help you a bit. So the first thing to have a think about is sales agents. Sales agents are crucial to your financial package. In fact, without a sales agent and without their projections, it's really hard to move forward into getting a film funded. So the reason for this is that investors have very little security. When they invest in a film, they can't really say whether it will ever make anything because it's an unknown quantity. However, a sales agent may be able to offer projections based upon similar films they've sold or films with similar actors in them and that kind of thing and if they're respected it does give the investor a lot of comfort. So how does a sales agent assess your project? Well the first thing they look at is obviously the script and they look at the genre and in some cases if it's for instance a horror or a martial arts film the genre itself and if it's well written could be enough for them to give projections upon because it doesn't necessarily have to have any named actors in it. But generally, sadly, you do need the actors. And the actors are really what they base their projections on, if I'm honest. <laughs> so it'll keep coming back to that. The actors, the actors, the actors, who is in it. It's like everything goes backwards from screen. So how do you get the actors? It is a whole different tutorial. However, what I would say is, let me give you some advice. If your grandmother's second cousin's dog knows Brad Pitt, please get friendly with that dog. And if you can get something via that dog to Brad Pitt, then do it. Because it is so hard to attach name talent, particularly when you're a first timer. You need to pull out all the stops, work out all your connections, no matter how tenuous, and give it a go. My advice is always be polite. Don't be too pushy. Some actors are really responsive to an outside connection. Others are not, and they really want you to go through the agent. Um, the problem is, the bigger the actor, the more blockage from the agent uh, because they're being offered so much stuff and obviously the agent is filtering and trying to get the best deals and your film, even though your script may be really great for that actor, might be too risky. You're a first timer, they've never heard of you, um, there's lots and lots of reasons. So, whatever you can do, try and get that to an actor maybe a different way if you can around the back door um, the other advice is just write really good parts just think about that and maybe offer it to an actor who doesn't normally play those kind of roles and they might just find it an interesting thing to do and take it I would also advise going via managers in the States because the managers are looking much more at the overall career of the actor as opposed to just you know what they're making and you know American agents are, well, pretty hard-nosed and they will, they will just cull you out. They are obligated to give the script to the actor, but they don't have to give it to them for 12 months. And they can also say anything they like while they pass it over. So just bear that in mind. So say you get to that point. You've got your actor, you've got your great script, you've maybe got your storyboards, you've got some professional team members and you've got sales estimates. What next? You can begin to piece together your film finance plan. 
Film finance can come from all different sources and I would advise really doing some research. A lot of it is grant work. So one of the easiest sources of film funding, it comes from government tax breaks or tax credits or tax grants and they can be given just for shooting a film in the area. And this can be your state, if you're in America, it can be in, in Canada, it can be your town, it can be your country and don't be scared of going outside your own country as well because you might find that there are more or higher rates of tax breaks outside and if your film isn't too low budget it could really work for you or you could look at doing a co-production where you tap into a tax break in one country and a tax break in another and they could fit together it begins to get a little bit complicated paperwork wise because you have to do official co-productions but sometimes you don't. In The Stolen we didn't. We did an unofficial co-production with Germany so um, it is possible. That's the first thing. Um, I would look there you can get between 20 to 40 percent of your budget just from tax breaks so get online look at all of the commissions everywhere and see what they're offering in that area and if it means you have to move to move your um, project to Australia or Canada or you know just Connecticut then do it okay that will be the simplest thing to do obviously taking into account having to hire a local crew and all that anyway so that's the first thing the second thing is uh, there are grants often given, separate grants, so equity grants given by film commissions. In Britain it's the BFI, the British Film Institute. In New Zealand for instance it's the New Zealand Film Commission and most countries have a film commission of some sort and you can apply. Now this is really really difficult to get this money. There normally is a hell of a lot of criteria um, they have to tick a lot of boxes because it's government money so they have to have certain things in place before they can give it to you and often it is leaning towards um, non-commercial projects so if you have a pro commercial project it might be really difficult to get money but I always say put in an application and then forget about it if you get the money from them and you get on to that system fantastic because once you're in their system you can do really well out of it. So the next thing is um, I guess private money. There are lots of different options. Um, there are bank, well banking I guess is different than private but I would say um, bank gaps which are difficult to get unless you have done pre-sales and a lot of the first time is watching this will not get pre-sales. Pre-sales have got more and more and more difficult to get and uh, a lot of banks just don't want to, they're, they're incredibly risk averse and they do not want to risk not getting their money back so they like to be assured that when the film is finished there will be a sale. It's very hard to do at the moment. So banks are difficult but there are private companies that do gap and when I say gap that is money that comes out in first position with nobody else. Okay, so it's got to come out first. And often that can be between 10 and 20%. So <clears throat> it's worth it if you can get 20 for sure. Um, but there'll be caveats. Again, Google Gap Financing and see what you find. Uh, the same companies will probably, if you are lucky enough to have a pre-sale, they will also cash flow pre-sales. Moving on, there is other types of funding. In Britain, there are there is a tax break for investors, which is different from the government tax, tax break for filmmakers, and that's called an enterprise investment scheme. And that means that the person investing uh, gets a 30% uh, well tax break on on their own tax bill. And there could be similar things like that in wherever you're living. It's worth looking into. This is a really good thing because it is a risky business for a private investor to put money in. So that if they know they're guaranteed something back, 
like a tax break, it becomes a little bit easier to convince them. If you do tap into this and you're fortunate enough to either find a fund that's already up and running and can assess your project and put the money in, or you find a private individual who's willing to do it, um, you can really get a big chunk of your budget. You know, I, I would say 30%. In my case, I probably got close to 50% of my budget from private individuals who went into an enterprise investment scheme and, an, and, and a startup enterprise investment scheme, which is another form of tax break, which was wonderful. Really, really helpful. Um, the other forms of funding are, there are just straight equity funds out there. Many in America, um, there are a few in the UK and there's quite a few in Germany as well. Um, their money has come from venture capitalists, they've come from private individuals who just really like film. It's, it's difficult, but they are funds and you should just, again, Google research. Really, really research and look up film equity funds, okay? That's different to film tax breaks, it's different to gap funding because equity is, is a different animal. They take um, a proportion of the movie. One of the other wonderful options, if you're lucky enough to meet them, is a wealthy person. Now they're really hard to find uh, unless you're particularly well connected. And if you're not well connected, but you know somebody who is, and they might be interested in, in doing film, you know, make a proposal to them. Say, look, do you think you could raise fun funds for me on my movie, for commission, for a credit, whatever you need to offer them, uh, and, and we can become a team. It is worth finding these people if you can, and befriending them, and really looking at a business deal. The only thing that I would say is that if you're talking to a private investor, really, really be as honest as possible about returns, about the risk, and all of that, because you don't want it to bite you on the arse later. It would be a nightmare. And it's also really sad for the rest of us who are being honest about whether the film's going to make money or not, because if they lose their money, they will never invest in a film again. So think about your future career. Now, a lot of wealthy people who may be wealthy from a different industry might get involved with the film purely because it's a film. It's interesting. They might like the subject matter. They may like the actor. They might like, yeah, the genre. They might like where it's being shot. It might be meaningful to them in some way, and it may not actually be about money. But ultimately, you really want to try and get their money back. And the other point that I should make is that if you do get a private individual, try and ensure that in the waterfall in their finance, in the finance plan, that they come out in a reasonably high position so they're not last on the list because that, that's not great. So from a private individual you could get 10% of your budget, you could get more, you could get five, who knows. But there are other options which I will tell you about. So the other option is to go and do a deal with a post-production house or a um, equipment house and do in-kind investment or they may actually do physical cash investment for a movie. And in a way, that's their way of discounting the, their services. Uh, however, it can come in in a version of an investment. And that could give you up to 5% of your budget also. Another little known and little utilized uh, option is a music deal. So there are companies out there who will take the rights to your soundtrack, obviously it has to be um, original music, and they will um, give you money for it up front. Um, or they might give it to you when you're in post. Uh, often it's only approximately 1% of your budget, but it's really useful because it's cash. They don't come out in the waterfall. They literally just take the, um, the soundtrack rights and then they go away. So 
The other option, which I've left till last, um, which the main reason being is, is that it is less and less likely these days, is a distribution deal. So if you have a movie that is very attractive um, and it has a really well-known actor or it's a particular genre that's very hip and um, that distributor believes that they can make money out of it, you may get a pre-sale. So they may commit to buying the movie before um, the film is made. And in that case, you can then finance it via a bank or a private investor. Um, and that could be multi-territory or it could just be one territory. You have to be very careful about how many territories they take uh, for what money because if you've got other investors involved, you have to be sure that they're still getting a piece of the pie when they come out. So, those are the options. You need to get on Google, you need to start looking this stuff up, and it's a lot of grunt work, okay? But I'm sure you can do it. So lastly, remember, film funding doesn't stop once you've raised the money. Unfortunately, investors are going to know what's going on with their money all the way through the process. They're going to want reports, they're going to want to know what's happening and boy when you have finished that film and it starts being shown to buyers they're going to want to know what the results are and unfortunately you're probably going to sweat because if they're not selling, the film is not selling for what you expected it to or it's not selling, it can be really stressful even though you may have warned the investors of the risks, they may not have really comprehended them or do, they don't want to hear it. And that can be a lot of sweat. So remember it doesn't stop. This is why I said it sucks because it doesn't matter that you raise the money and then you get to make the film and you have that great time on set and you really enjoy everything and then you get to show it to people you've still got people to answer to at the end of it. Um, my final word is, if you by any chance get offered by a studio to be taken under their wing and they pay for the whole lot and just give you a fee, dear God, take it. Okay, just take it. Forget about the independent thing. Just take the studio deal. Okay, you don't want to be thinking about this stuff. All right, really try and get away from it as quickly as you can. So just think of this smaller movie as your stepping stone to being looked after later, if you can. Okay. Now, if any of you out there are thinking about funding your own film and you think that I really know what I'm doing, please don't come to me. I'm not going to help you fund your film because I hate it. Okay. But watch The Stolen.